Hello, this is Trinon, and welcome to Let's Play Torchlight. Torchlight is an action RPG in the same veins as the Diablo franchise. In fact, Torchlight is very similar to the first Diablo. There are three heroes you can pick from in Torchlight. The Destroyer, the Alchemist, and the Vanquisher. For this Let's Play, I'll be relying on the Alchemist a very powerful character specializing in magic. In addition, I will have a pet to pick from, either a dog or a cat. In this case I'll pick a dog, because cats are assholes. With this in mind, we are ready to begin playing on the hardest difficulty setting. Ember is the essence of magic, and the keystone of my art. For my kind, Torchlight is a beacon, a place of power, the largest cache of Ember ever found. I had heard nothing of the troubles afflicting that place. I came only to serve my own ends, but I was lost as soon as I set foot in Torchlight. The evil gathering there swallowed me, and I may never break free of it entirely. The mines are dark, and below that, the blackness is impossible to describe. There is power beyond imagining, but the price is so very high. This is Torchlight. You may notice music similar to something you've heard before. If so, then you've played Diablo, and heard the music of the composer Matt Ullman, who also made music for Torchlight. When I say this game shares similarities to Diablo, I mean it. You enter a town plagued with troubles, go into a dungeon plagued with monsters, and fight your way down to the bottom to uncover the mystery of Torchlight, not Diablo. In Torchlight, you will gain quests by talking to various NPCs in town. In addition, there will be vendors, but they're not helping right now due to, well, a monster attack. A primary part of action RPGs like Torchlight and Diablo is inventory management. Monsters will drop loot, you'll pick up the loot, you'll equip the loot, you'll drop old loot, and you'll sell stuff. The second half of Torchlight is combat. Help or stay out of the way. Combat is very simple. You use the left mouse to move and attack, the right mouse to cast special abilities along with the number keys, and um, that's it. Oh, and of course you hit the left mouse to pick up the loot. Ring! Over here! I can't hold them back much longer! You alright, Syl? Rest here a while. I'm going ahead to finish the job. It's no wonder Master Ulrich sent for my help. The Ember Mines are overrun with these creatures. His letter was urgent, but I had no idea how dire things had become. I am Syl, and that was my companion, Brink. We've only just arrived in Torchlight, and it looks like we're going to need some help. You look capable, and I can pay you well. Please, catch up to Brink before he gets himself killed. You have gained a task. Before descending into the Dungeon of Torchlight, you will have to grab some certain items, in this case, healing potions. Fail. Since I'm playing on the hardest difficulty, health is actually a concern sometimes, and that's where healing potions come in. This game very much is about spamming health and mana potions while you're fighting so you can keep your health regenerating. Potions can make the difference between a win or a death in a frantic fight. I've arrived in Torchlight and begun my exploration of the tunnels below. These mines are vast and aglow with ember. I've never seen so rich a vein. Miners labor to extract it and take no heed of my warnings. I cannot blame them. I too could not resist the pull of ember. This ember is the same as that which afflicts me. The taint within it resonates with the corruption in my bones. I can feel it so clearly now. Blight springs from the depths and flows up through the veins. To purge myself of this evil, I must find the source. The dungeons in Torchlight are divided into areas, and the areas are further divided into levels. Welcome to the Orden Mines, the first area of the game. For this level only, I won't be making any major cuts. 
The sad fact is that the dungeons in Torchlight can get pretty repetitive, and unfortunately, that is not very fun to watch, even though it may be fun to play. The play at the beginning of Torchlight is fairly simple. Swing your stick, bash the monster, sometimes cast a spell if there's a bunch of them. That being said, there are a few details to mention. Monsters do have special abilities to note. For instance, the rat folk run away when you kill a friend. The Varkalin leap at you. Spiders poison you. All of these do need to be taken into account in some way or the other, even if the way you take it into account is by bashing them with a stick more. The trickiest part of Torchlight on hard difficulties is keeping an eye on your health. While you do usually have the option to heal yourself to a definite amount, it's really about eyeing that health bar and making sure that you're not over your head. If you are, that you heal yourself rapidly. It's easy to forget sometimes where you're in the game, and all too quickly an enemy can wipe you out. I can't do that. A lot of items are unidentified at the start and need a scroll to reveal them. Why this is in the game, I have no clue. Now is a good time to talk about the pet. The pet does several things in the game. First, he will fight by your side and kill enemies. Second, if you feed him fish, he will turn into a monster and fight by your side and kill enemies. Third, and probably most important, he can take items and run back to town and sell them, returning to you with the profits. Hello. The levels, the loot, and even the stats of the loot in Torchlight are all randomly generated. What you find in the dungeon will change every time. Although Torchlight is very focused on action, it is also an RPG. What I mean by this is that the damage you deal is done on a virtual die roll and a lot of your abilities and strengths and defenses are determined by statistics on your character sheet. I was having such an easy time of clearing enemies in this dungeon that I was almost wondering if I was playing on the hardest difficulty. Indeed I am. text over there represents a MacGuffin I need to collect. There will be repeated quests in the game where I have to find a ember located deeper into the dungeon. Every quest will have an ember found deeper and deeper into Torchlight's mines. Some barrels will blow up when you hit them. Fun times! Killing monsters rewards experience, and having enough experience will level you up. When you level up, you will be able to increase the statistics of your character sheet, and to gain a skill. 
In this case, I will pick the ability to summon another imp from the Corpses of the Dead. As for my ability points, I will pump them into magic. Although there are a lot of ways you can build a character in Torchlight for each class, the Alchemist optimally is built with magic in mind. For this first portion of the game, my main focus will be gathering skill points to summon more imps, and to strengthen my minions' powers. A lot of the enjoyment in Torchlight comes from progressively tweaking your character. The game has a nice pace of rewarding you with the new abilities and then testing out those new abilities on a swarth of opponents. Let's just sit back for a little bit and watch the dungeon crawling. The glittering aura that says stairs down above it is the stairway down to the next level. This is how most dungeons in Torchlight will work. You simply find your way to the next level, killing enemies and grabbing loot as you go. From now on I will not be showing full levels of Torchlight, simply because they go on for quite some time and can be very repetitive. Before going down to the next level, it is time to return to town to turn in some quests and grab some new ones, as well as sell and buy some items. Back in town, we spot a new NPC with an exclamation mark over his head. Meet Trill, the wandering bard robot. The sum of his quest is that we go kill monsters for him and he writes heroic tales about us as well as gives us items. You have gained a task. Anything you need. You have gained an experience. Anything you need. You have gained a task. The important thing to note here, aside from the fact that I gained a level, is that I also gained a gem. Gems can be socketed into certain item slots and they will increase the potency of the item, giving them better stats for us to use. One mechanic I've yet to show in the game is fishing. Yes, fishing is in Torchlight. What a fun and exciting way to spend your time in the game. Fishing does have its benefits. For the fish you catch, you can feed to your pet to turn into a monster. This monster will have added stats and possibly a bonus ability that can help you out. Alright, with our fish, our potions, our levels, and our quests turned in, and quest gained, it is time to progress to the next area. That big spider, followed by a group of smaller spiders, is a elite monster. Elite monsters tend to be more difficult, have a yellow name above their head, do more damage, are bigger, and also drop better items for you to grab. This is arguably the first difficult fight I've come across in the game, simply because not only is there a spider that is slowly inching its way towards me, ready to deal out lots of damage, but there are also a good amount of monsters swarming the area in a very tight space. For the most part, the trick here is simply to keep an eye on your health and use potions to heal. Heal, heal. Aside from that, luring enemies away and having them chase you is also a very good tactic in this game, simply because getting hit hurts at hard mode. 
My mana is low. Torchlight is fairly good about letting you wield about any weapon as long as you have the stat requirements for it. This can be helpful for fighting things such as cave trolls when your weapon from before is a little weaker than you need. You may remember that the main quest here is to find Brink. Luckily enough, Brink is just ahead after we kill a couple of monsters and progress forward. Still send you after well, I skipped some dialogue there, but you may have guessed that the story in Torchlight is not as important as the cutting people apart of this. Pretty much what's happened here is that Brink has joined our party and will wander along killing monsters with us. This can actually be quite handy as he does a decent amount of damage. After we wander a little bit forward, we'll come to the end of the level and we'll be ready to press down. There are a few enemy types to be noted at this point in Torchlight. First is the Ratlin Foreman. The Ratlin Foreman hits hard and will not flee. By the way, there's fishing spots in the dungeon too. That hooded figure with the staff up there is a Varkalin Mage. Sparkling mages can be actually kind of tricky because they can slow you and they shoot projectiles that do a fair amount of damage. At this point you can probably see why I picked the alchemist. Fighting these creatures in close combat or without any minions to distract them would be pretty difficult at this point. But the alchemist has the advantage of both having some meat shields and the range attacks to keep enemies away. Trill wanted us to kill Varkasir, and indeed here he is. Again, this would be a fairly hard fight with the mages slowing and shooting projectiles, but then again, I'm the alchemist and I can kick ass. Quest Sometimes there will be shrines in the game. Shrines can provide some sort of benefit to the player when they're interacted with. In this case, I've come across a Shrine of Enchantment. A shrine of Enchantment will empower one of my weapons, with a small chance of breaking it the more enchanted it becomes. In addition to leveling through experience, you can gain skill points through fame. Killing elite monsters such as that giant goo will increase your fame ever so slightly. Once it has reached a new rank, you will gain a skill point. The stairway down here will lead to the first boss fight of the game. Before we go there though, we will have some important matters to deal with. With our important matters taken care of, it's on to the boss level of this first area. Now I have you. What have you done with Ulrich? I am here, Brink. I sent for Syl. But I don't recall inviting you, or your friend. You may still prove useful, however. Be still!
Beat the first boss of the game, Brink the Corrupted. Brink is mainly a melee character with a few tricks up his sleeves. First, he can summon a bunch of corrupted crystals to appear. Those crystals will explode upon uh, set duration. Brink can also cause a ground slam, which can also hit players at range. Generally though, it's best to hit him from range, simply because Brink really hits his hardest in melee range. A while back I picked up a scroll that lets me cast a flaming sword. Spells like this are usable by all characters, but can only be cast every so often. For instance, this scroll has a minute cooldown before it can be cast again. My pet can also learn spells if I find them. Once again, the Alchemist makes this game fairly easy, even on its hardest difficulty. Brink, no! What has happened? Alas, my friend. You say this is Ulrich's doing? Then his summons was a trap. But why? The corruption here must have overwhelmed his mind. I can't believe it's so powerful. Yes, yes. I see it's touched you as well. Light is spreading through you, and if we don't find a way to stop it, you'll meet the same fate as Brink. I'm sorry I brought you into this. I'll do my best to cure you. Meet me in Torchlight, and I'll tell you my plan. You have gained a time. This concludes part one of Let's Play Torchlight.